Okay, so we, we definitely had some issues with this last time. We just had our test on this, and, uh, you know, I don't want this to go away, um, and, you know, it'll help the other people uh, that see this, you know, next year too. Uh, and here we go. So how do we write conversion factors to solve problems such as the one on the bottom right here? So I'm talking this problem down here on the bottom. Um, what is the mass of N2O4 in grams if you have that many atoms of oxygen? So we're talking, you know, atoms of oxygen inside of a formula N2O4. There are some preliminary steps that you can take before you even try to solve the problem. And that would be what I have up here on the top. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write the conversion factors for these three different substances. Now, I chose these three because they represent each of the three fundamental particles we discussed in the other video, that you can put with Avogadro's number. Um, and they would be, if you have an element all by itself, if you have an ionically bonded substance, or if you have a covalently bonded substance. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. We have PB. So PB, the element lead, is an element all by itself, referred to as a free element. Charge is zero, by the way. It doesn't have a charge. It's not an ion. So we have a free element, lead, PB. There are two conversion factors that we can write for an element such as this. The first one would be always, it's always one mole equals and one mole equals. And one mole would equal the molar mass. Now this is just PB. So looking at my periodic table, I see I have 207 grams, according to the periodic table, equal to one mole, 207 grams per mole. I can also say one mole will always equal 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that'll be same will be true for the other two. So one mole equals the mass from the periodic table, and one mole equals Avogadro's number. So now the unit that goes with Avogadro's number goes back to the top here, and that is when you have an element, the fundamental particle is atoms. So that takes care of the first one. When you have an element all by itself, you're only going to have those two conversions. I'm going to go over here to the right. So we have Li2SO4. Um, Li2SO4 is an ionic substance. How do I know that? I have a metal. And in this case, I have a metal ion bonded to a polyatomic ion sulfate. Okay, so I need to find the molar mass. So I, um, I'm going to get my calculator out here, and we have um, two lithiums. So 2 times 6.94. Remember, I always take three digits from the periodic table. Plus... 32.1 for sulfur, plus uh, 4 times 16, 40, 64, and I get 109. We'll round that to 110. Close enough for us for today. All right, so I can do the same thing. One mole equals molar mass. I can also do one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, Avogadro's number of the fundamental particle. The fundamental particle of an ionic substance is formula units. So I have one mole equals the molar mass, one mole equals Avogadro's number. And now I can look at the formula and say in one formula unit, what do I have? Well, I know I have ions. And in this case, it will depend on what the question is asking me. If the question was asking me, how many total ions do I have? I would say I have three ions total. Why? Well, because I have one SO4 ion, and I have two lithium ions. So that's how we solve for the other conversion factors uh, when doing these calculations. So I'll do that again. In one formula unit, you have three total ions, because as I've been preaching with this is, it is two halves of an ionic compound, positive half being lithium, negative half, in this case, being sulfate. I have two lithiums. But I only have one sulfate, because if I had more than one sulfate, I would have parentheses around it and a number out there. So I have two lithium ions in this formula. I have one sulfate ion, or I have three ions total. Okay, so now for the big one. Why the big one? Well, because the, we're going to solve the problem on the bottom here, N2O4. I want to come up with the three conversion factors for N2O4. Okay, so up to here, N2O4. It's covalently bonded. When it's covalently bonded, the fundamental particle is a molecule. All right, so one mole equals one mole equals, just like the other ones. I can do the molar mass. So 2 times 14 
Um, 4 times 16 is 64. 28 plus 64 gives me a molar mass of 92. So I can say 1 mole equals 92 grams. I can say 1 mole equals Avogadro's number of the fundamental particle. It's covalent bond, so molecules. So now the next conversion I can have one, one molecule equals six atoms total because I have four N's and two O's. So six total atoms. Or I can say I have two atoms of nitrogen. I'm going to give myself some more room over here. I can also say that I have four atoms of oxygen. So it depends on what the question is asking me to do. Okay, so let me see if I can just copy these quick. Um, let me uh, copy that. I'm going to go to the next page, um, and I'm going to paste them just so I can see them again. Okay, so here are my conversion factors that we just got. So now what I want to do is use these. Now this goes back to what we learned at the very start of the year, which is dimensional analysis. Notice what I'm starting with. 9.54 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen in a sample of N2O4. I want to know what is the mass of N2O4. Okay. So I need to look at my conversion factors. I'm starting with atoms of O. So I want to look at my conversions, and I see down here I have a, a, a conversion factor that says 4 atoms of oxygen equals 1 molecule. So I just want to plug that right in, four atoms of O, one molecule. Then, Avogadro's number of molecules equals one mole. This is as easy as it gets with dimensional analysis. I've canceled atoms of O. I have molecules on top. So I want to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules on the bottom so that molecules cancel. And that is equal to one mole. Now I've changed it to moles. So I changed it from atoms to molecules, molecules to moles, and then mass is always grams. So now my last conversion that I created was 1 mole equals 92 grams. If I gave you these conversion factors and this question on the first test of the year, you would have been able to do it because you know how to assemble to cancel. I'm starting with atoms of O, so I want to cancel atoms of O. That gives me molecules. Remember, whatever you put down here, it's what it's equal to. That's how we dealt with conversion factors. Now I have molecules. So I want to put molecules down here. My conversion factor with molecules is Avogadro's number equals one mole. And then one mole equals 92 grams. All right, so from there, I just have to plug and chug. Just put them in my calculator. 9.54 times 10 to the 24th times 92 divided by 4 divided by Avogadro's number. So the correct answer is there are 364 grams when you have that many atoms of oxygen.